99% of investors don't know how to analyze an ETF. You may think you do, and I did too until I connected two pieces of information that flipped the entire process on its head. In this video, I'm going to show you what most investors get wrong about ETFs, how using this simple strategy will transform your portfolio, and how you can easily implement this new way of thinking into your investments. As I was looking at the historical return for SEHD, I thought I had it down. In my head, I'm thinking 12% annual returns over 10 years. This has got to keep going, right? Dividend growth at about 5%. There's no way this can ever go down. Then it hit me like a ton of bricks. Why on earth am I looking at only historical returns? How can I be so sure this performance will continue? Looking back, I realized every ETF analysis video I had ever seen had done just that. They looked at the price movement over the past 10 years, dividends over the past 10 years, maybe assets under management, and simply stopped there. With any other investment, this would be grossly irresponsible. What if someone told you the only thing you needed to do to analyze Apple stock was look at the total returns over the past 10 years and blindly assume the same performance would continue? Even a child would know something is wrong with that. To analyze a stock, we need to look at financial statements, understand payout ratios, analyze the market sector, value the stock, on and on and on. Looking solely at historical returns hardly tells us anything. So why do we do it with ETFs? What most investors miss is that ETFs are nothing more than collections of individual stocks. The average performance of these stocks drives the performance of the ETF. What I'm saying may sound obvious, but what this means for ETF analysis is really important. Instead of looking at historical returns, we need to actually analyze the underlying stocks to predict future performance. If we have this information, we can actually value an ETF to see if we should buy now or wait for a dip. There's only one problem with this. There could be hundreds of stocks in a single ETF. So how do we manage analyzing this many stocks at once? I wanted to apply this strategy to one of my favorite ETFs, SCHD. I started at the top of the list and worked my way down. Broadcom, okay. Net income growth is 37%, cash flow growth is 42%, dividend growth is 35%. Wow, that's really high. Okay, next is Amgen. Net income growth is 2.4%, not that great. Cash flow growth is 4.3%, dividend growth is 16%, and this got old really fast. I hate busy work. Why would I give myself days worth of mind-numbing data collection? Fortunately, computer programming makes mindless repetitive tasks really easy to automate, and I have just enough experience in Python to write a script perfectly suited for this purpose. I wrote a program called Ticker that pulls historical financial statements, analyzes income growth, dividend growth, and payout ratios, then prints the results. All I have to do is download a spreadsheet of an ETF's underlying assets and run through each one. This let me analyze all the stocks in SEHD in about 15 minutes. And I know what you're thinking, but I don't know how to code. The program is actually really simple, but I don't have time to get into the nuts and bolts of it in this video. If you want me to break down the exact process so you can do it yourself, leave a comment down below and I'll make a tutorial video in the future. This method works, but how can this strategy help us generate larger returns in our investments? The most attractive aspect of ETF investing is that it takes most of the thinking out of investing. You look at an ETF that's done well, assume the fund managers know what they're doing, and blindly buy assuming the price is going to keep going up. Let's apply our strategy to two popular ETFs and see if we can use it to pick a better performing investment. We'll choose VOO and QQQ. If we analyze the financial statements and dividend history of every stock in VOO, we find the average income growth is 18.4%, free cash flow growth is 15%, Operating income growth is 16.8% and operating cash flow growth is 14%. The average dividend growth is 10.5% and the payout ratios on net income hover around 59.6%. Performing the same analysis on QQQ, we find average net income growth at 20.9%, free cash flow is 16.9%, operating income at 21.3% and operating cash flow at 16.9%. Dividends have grown 13% on average, and payout ratios on net income were 62.8%. As you can see, the fundamentals of QQQ's underlying stocks is better than VOO's, so let's see how each investment would play out. If you bought VOO 10 years ago and didn't touch it at all, you'd be looking at nearly 12% annual returns per year. Not bad. A little bit of analysis and strategy, however, could have made you invest in a different ETF with even higher returns. If you bought QQQ 10 years ago, you'd enjoy over 17% in annual growth. This may not seem like a huge difference, but it really is. $10,000 at 12% for 30 years gives you a final balance of almost $360,000. $10,000 at 17% over 30 years gives you a balance of over $1.5 million. QQQ is advertised as a high growth ETF, so it makes sense that their total returns over the past 10 years have been higher than a broad market ETF like VOO. Analyzing the fundamental performance of each stock gives us more insight into why this has happened. Where this strategy could prove more useful is on ETFs that focus on a particular sector or follow an index that's not maintained by S&P, Dow Jones, or Russell. 
I also want to expand the program to include stock valuation using a discounted cash flow model, dividend growth model, and a whole host of valuation ratios. If you want me to analyze a specific ETF using this program, leave a comment down below and I might feature it in my next video. I talked about SCHD earlier in the video, and if you've spent any time watching dividend stock content recently, you know people are freaking out over this ETF. SCHD has massively underperformed over the past couple years, and I had to find out why. I ran SCHD through my program and the fundamental performance of SCHD's underlying stocks was shocking. To see how this experiment played out, click the video card here. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, stay safe and take it easy.